you wouldn't know it to see him now, but back in 2017, this special koala was tiny, scared and alone. We were called out on a rescue, actually for his mother. She actually, yeah, she did die. I looked up and saw this little fluff ball. When we actually had him in our arms, we thought, oh my God, he's missing a foot. <laughs> Born with just one foot, the little Joey couldn't jump or climb properly. His rescuers initially dubbed him Tripod, but Marley wasn't having a bar of it. I thought, no, he deserves better than that. I think he's triumphant, so I called him Triumph. He was just adorable <laughs> and he was quite feisty. I pleaded to care for him. So he stayed at home with me for, jeez, I don't know, six months or something, which was awesome. <laughs> Triumph quickly developed a cheeky personality and a deep bond with Marley, eventually finding a home at the Friends of the Koala Care Centre in Lismore. The quest to find Triumph for foot began. I was asking around at all the vets. Everyone said, no, it can't be done. Even the biggest names that did prosthesis for animals just said that it could not be done. Posting Triumph's story online gained offers of help from around the world, but overseas experts couldn't figure out a koala's needs and couldn't visit because of COVID. We were starting to give up. I probably would have never given up. But <laughs> right when the chips were down, a glimmer of hope from just down the road. A local dental prosthetist caught wind of Triumph's troubles. And I thought, well, a foot is a prosthesis and I make prosthesis, so... I thought I would have a go. John had a hunch dental materials would do the trick, but it was still a big jump from human dentures to koala feet. Well, it's, it's a bit different. <laughs> you don't have to eat with them to start with, but uh, the big challenge was to keep it on his leg so that it doesn't come off when he's climbing. Something that'll grip so he can climb a tree with it, something that's comfortable, something that's easy to put on, easy to take off. Took an impression of his stump and um, managed to manufacture something that actually works for him, so it's good. When I put this one on, he jumped <laughs> for the first time. He was running around and actually using his foot, and I cried. This is a world first for koalas anywhere. This worked, I'm happy. <laughs> John plans to keep tinkering with the design to give Triumph the best possible foothold in life. And even though this koala will never live in the wild again, he'll keep getting plenty of love. He's the most beautiful koala in the world. I just love everything about him. He'll bite me. He'll probably wee on me. I accept all of that. That's just how it is. I would do anything for that boy. He's worth it. Wow. Ah, oh, meanwhile, I see a vet for all of my dental needs. <laughs> <laughs> Was that oh. the cutest story that this show yes. has ever aired? Confirm or deny, please. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. <laughs> I think it's it. pretty close. And such true love between her and the koala. Yeah, I know. Like, you know. And it's... I will not hear a bad word against dentists ever again. I know. No. Like, they are forever in my good books now. I totally get your kids to the dentist after that story. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> gosh, you're right. Yes, parents, take a recording. Ten mm. play. Get onto ten, ten play. play. Get your kids ten to play. the dentist. Boom, Claire Hooper. Yes. And Friends of, of the Koala have only just opened their hospital a few months ago. They need all the help they can get. To find out more about their work, head to our website for the links.